Hi, my name is Ali Shersava and in this short video we're going to talk about how you can quickly and easily design a digital power supply. We will discuss how you will input your parameters into our WDS design software which is a very sophisticated free piece of software and then we will test it on this new board from SD Micro and then we make some measurements to show that everything works. So we're going to start the design process uh, with t looking at our parameters, typically input voltage, output voltage, output current, or, uh, uh, or, or let's say output power. And then we're going to input that into a automated design software called WDS. This is an extremely sophisticated uh, piece of uh, software, which is actually completely free for ST micro processors and it designs digital power supplies. You, it will give you not only the component values, the stresses on the component values and so on, based on your user input, but also it gives you the control algorithm and all the coefficients that you need for a, uh, a stable control loop. Eventually you can take that into a sample code which, you, which we will also provide. You create, after you have created the coefficients for your controller, you, you paste those into the code and then you can run it on your own power supply. As a design example, we are going to use this new discovery kit from uh, ST Micro and we're going to design one step by step and then finally we're going to measure the loop with the Bodhi 100 to show that we have got a very nice stable digital power supply. Okay, uh, so first we are going to demonstrate the WDS uh, power supply design software in order to design for now a voltage mode buck converter. Uh, the one that we're going to design for is based on the parameters that are already available on this brand new uh, development discovery kit from ST. Uh, I show you the website from ST. It is a B-G474EDPOW1. It looks something like this. The camera is showing you right now this particular board. And what we have to do is we have to type in the input voltage, output voltage, output current, uh, and also the inductor or capacitor that is already soldered on this. However, WDS design software actually calculates these values for you. So not only will it calculate the loop values, uh, it will also calculate all the component values. So for now, uh, our input voltage is 5 volts. Uh, I have already typed this in. You can have a range of values. For example, you can perhaps go from maximum of 8 volts to a minimum of 3 volts and WDS will calculate all the stresses for you. You can see that it has drawn two extra lines here which shows you the loop parameters for the maximum voltage and minimum voltage. But for now let us assume that we have got a solid 5 volt input which we are actually taking from the USB cable on this board. Then the current, because it's coming from the USB cable, this is really just a discovery kit uh, to get you started with digital power. Uh, we have limited to 200 milliamps because it is being powered from the uh, USB port of the computer. The ones that we use in our workshops are actually much bigger and heftier because we need a lot more current in order to give uh, a much nicer load step response. But as a starter kit, this is wonderful because you don't need a big power supply to go with it. You can just plug it into your USB uh, port and test the software. So therefore I'm designing a power supply with an input voltage of 5 volts, output voltage of 3.3 volts and an output current of 200 milliamps. Then I have to specify the amount of ripple that I am, I am willing to allow on the output of the power supply and that determines the size of the output capacitor. In my case I am allowing a um, 5 millivolt uh, overshoot and undershoot after a 50% load step and a half a percent of ripple. And these two are, the, the software uses these two parameters to work out the output capacitor size. Then, because we are using the ST Micro tool, uh, it is digital control is already selected for you. Then our switching frequency and the sampling interval from the time you sample the ADC to the time that you update the PWM. Finally, I am going to cross over at 
8 kilohertz. So the crossover frequency of my power supply determines how fast my power supply recovers from a load transient. Um, I am going to cross that 8 kilohertz, which is a reasonable crossover frequency. And of course, I want a phase margin of around 50 degrees, not lower than 45 degrees. So while, when, when I type these values into the software, then the software will automatically calculate everything else. This software is uh, available free to download from the uh, link below. And of course, we will produce the link right at the end, in the end of the video also. So for a buck converter, there is no transformer, but the software also does support uh, power supplies that have transformers in them. And then we go on to the semiconductor. Here, the, the software has given you the stresses that uh, your semiconductors are going to have to tolerate based on the input voltages and output voltages and currents that you have already put into the software. I have already typed in the values of the MOSFETs that are being used on this board so you can see that the RDS of the MOSFET that was already on the board is 56 however if you are designing it from scratch then you could use these values in order to select your values uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the components. Here again the voltage drop across the secondary uh, across the output diode and then we go to the output filter. The software has selected for you a value for the inductor based on the ripple requirements. Uh, the one that is soldered on the board is 51 microhenries. You can select this directly from the software, whatever you solder on. And the same applies to the capacitance uh, that uh, we have soldered on board. Then the interesting part, uh, the software will Calculate the values of the poles and zeros of your compensator based on the crossover frequency and the phase margin that we typed in on one of the first tabs. And it has automatically placed the poles and zeros. This is, of course, in continuous time. But then, because we are using digital, we're going to have to convert that into discrete time, which the software will do for you. And here, you type in the clock frequency of your processor in the case of the SD micro that I'm using. Uh, it is 5.4 gigahertz and uh, the number of bits for the ADC, the range of the ADC and therefore pretty much all of the calculations are automated and I am left only with the coefficient of my compensator. All I have to do is copy these into clipboard and then I can go to perhaps notepad. There we go and I can just paste these. And of course, I'll be doing that in my code. The code for stabilizing this power supply will also be available from the link below in order to download. And again, at the end of the video, we provide you the link for it. There we go. So the control loop is complete. Here is the circuit diagram of this buck converter. The coefficients are given here and you can even print a summary of all the values, including the simulation of the loop characteristics. So if I go to my frequency response, this is what WDS has designed. This is my gain plot. You can see here that I've got eight kilohertz of crossover frequency and 50 degrees of phase margin. You can see that I've got 11 dBs of gain margin and the slope at, cro cro a slope at crossover is around 24 dBs, which is not too bad. Therefore, this is a relatively good stable power supply and it's been designed almost purely by the software. So what we're going to do next is we're going to measure it with the Bode 100. Uh, we're going to measure the loop and then we're going to import that into WDS and superimpose the real measurement on top of the simulated measurement and see whether we're getting a real good match. So I've got my everything set up. It's already powered. I go to Bode Analyzer Suite and uh, let us start the measurement. If I get rid of this, you can see that the Bode is plotting the gain plot, which is over here, and the phase plot. And if I go to 0 dBs, I designed for 8 kilohertz in the simulation in WDS. It is actually crossing over at 7.5 kilohertz. And I designed for 50 degrees of phase margin. And in real life, I'm getting 55 degrees of phase margin. All I have to do is save this. Uh, 
and save it as a file. There we go. And then what I can do is I can import that into WDS and superimpose the two on top of each other. And you can see that I've got almost a perfect match. What I have here is the green line, which is the simulation from WDS. And then I've got the black line, which is the real measurement from Bode 100. And you can see that around crossover frequency, we have got almost a near perfect match. We have designed a buck converter in approximately five to 10 minutes. Of course, in real life, it's a little bit more complicated than this, but you can see how this tool can help you. And you can start very easily with digital power on this particular board. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.